daily market review with some regrets and I'm going to show you why. Um, I did not participate in the London session because Europe and uh, UK were both in bank holiday, so I didn't expect much from the um, from the US, uh, London session. But we had the news at 16 my time, which was 10 New York time for USD, and I said, you know what, I think it's gonna move there, and it, it did, indeed. And I just uh, didn't manage the position well. To be honest. I shouldn't even be pissed because what I did was logical, but it always hurts a little bit. Uh, we will dig into that later. Um, to be uh, just so that we get out of the way, I'm at 0.00R for the day and for the week because it just started. Um, if I held the GBP short since I only had 0.5 risk, I would have been up probably 1R. Okay, Dixie, we opened here. We have nothing to reference at all, except maybe the fair value gap in here, which I deleted because we breached the upside, but now we are back in. I'm gonna have to re-add it till here. All right, this spring to front. Okay, we are back in it again. Looks like we're going above it. Let's see if the next candle can go lower. We never had a proper breach. The closest was this one going lower, closing below, then this one acting as uh, resistance and immediately came back higher. So again, consolidation, very boring. Nothing we can do about it. But we have equalize up here, which is worth adding. Three pixels. All right, um, on the H, uh, we have this uh, daily SMT, which we have to consider low, lower, and uh, also this one here, GBP went higher while Euro was failing to do so. So we have some uh, higher time frame SMT with the seasonal tendencies suggesting that market usually goes lower. So lots of uh, macro, influence right now in May. Let's go into the H1. We don't need this. These levels are the H4 imbalance in here, which we filled, came back in. No support, no resistance, no support. And now that we are dealing inside of it again, we went lower. And this level has a nice confluence with the H1 fair value gap in here. So we are blending the H1 with the H4. This is an imbalance that needs a little bit of filling, and this is an old area of order flow. When it hits it, it's likely to reverse, and that's how I was basing my trade. And I just wanted the equalize up here, which I will show as a market maker buy model, but the move, the move, since it's bank holiday and there is less liquidity, it can, it's a 50-50, it can move a lot or just be very slow. In this case, since we had the combo with the New York session and the news, um, volatility picked up in that case. But if we had basically nothing, I don't think we would have had this move. Let's look at the M5, what happened there. So we have this H4 imbalance here, first of all, that we come back in and immediately go higher. What happened? Let's analyze this on the M5. We hit the H4 level there, we went higher and we reclaimed this range. We bump at the upper portion, lower portion, then we have a move lower in here. And we have to ask ourselves, does it create an imbalance in here? Nope, it doesn't. Then it consolidates a little bit more, goes lower. And this is where I got tricked. <laughs> went up and up candle and explosion for the news, clearing of the buy side liquidity, this tiny imbalance and actually going much further than I expected. Now, a GBP on the H1 at this order block with a tiny bit of a value gap. But the reason why I wanted shorts for GBP was because from this 
low to this high. We only hit equilibrium at the fair value gap closure in here, but I think it needed a much deeper retracement towards the bullish OB or at least this order block with the fair value gap. Um, so that was the basis for my short. We just traced back into the range, H1 order block, hit it. If it starts breaking down, and to me breaking down means a fair value gap on the M5, I can go short. And as you can see, that's exactly what happened. We went higher, we broke down, we came back in into the, into the range, I went short. And in here we have double SMT, which is always confusing. We both have this low, these two. Actually, this one here, like this, going higher. And we have this going lower. So we're like, hold on, is this correct? Is this wrong? Should this go higher? Should this go lower? But then we have also SMT up here. Now, since we have uh, this one and this one, in reality, I should have said, you know what? Let's just play the odds. Uh, risk to reward is higher than one. It makes sense to take this trade. I don't think it's 50-50. We moved from an H1 level. We broke down with a fair value gap. And this bounce here was just because we feel this imbalance. Starting here, hits it, comes back in. So double SMT, contraction. And nice dump. How I wanted to manage this trade was the following. With a short here. At this entry here, stop here. This was at 90. And I wanted to take partials below this low and below this low plus the H1 order block from the bodies. And then I would have taken the first partial. I think it was 1.6 R. That's what I remember. Maybe the execution was a little bit higher, who knows, but went lower. Um, and then I would have kept 20% off to see if this liquidity could have been swept. And even that one worked. So let's just say 0 0.8 on this one. I would have probably made like 1, 1 1.7 R, 1. 2R roughly speaking, but it was 0.5%. So I, did, I didn't really miss on much. What I I was pissed about was boom, explosion to the first partial, like explosion directly there. It stops at the rebalancing, bounces, bounces again, and then it breaks down. Let's study this area on the lower time frame because I'm curious. Yeah, weeks, weeks, weeks. It's just weaking into it. It's gonna give up eventually. We have all of the sell side here. And what's this? Consolidation, one, two, market maker sell model. Some um, time distortion in here and it broke down so nicely. We also have the volume imbalance just ahead of the drop. And I closed the trade at, I don't know, 50, 58, two minutes before. And it died, it died. Um, but we also have to mention how this wasn't even the best trade simply because EurGBP was bearish and uh, we broke down hard, came back in. This level here is the H4 CB closure, hits it. So if this has to go lower, Euro will be overall weaker. So it's better to go on Euro shorts. And as we can see here, we have the same logic. But let's first go into the H1. So we have the last up candle before they move lower. This last up candle, as you can see, the body is tiny. Oh, I said when the body is tiny, maybe focus on the body. But, it, but when it's this wiki, you can actually also focus on 50% of the fair value gap, which I'm gonna mark like this. And you can see the perfection of the bodies there. So we, fo we focused on that. Then we came back lower, we created the fair value gap. And one thing that put me off guard was study the difference between how we broke down in here, breaking structure down here. So this move lower is continuous against this one that barely goes into 50% of this week. 
So to me, this was weaker. That's why I elected this one. And if I have to pick between the analysis on your GBP and what I see on the currency, the major, I'll, I'll always go with the major. I only like to use your GBP when I have no idea between this one and this one, which one is weaker or stronger. Um, so I elected, of course, to go to, with GBP, which wasn't the best choice, but it made so much more sense to me because it broke down harder after hitting a good H1 level. While this level, while it was good, it's not... I don't have enough confidence in it. It's just something that I'm noting. And also this, this went lower. And every time it goes lower like this, it creates breakers that are tougher to go through. And in here it created basically nothing. So the move should have been smoother in here. And I'd say it was, they were both rather smooth. And now we can see how GBP is catching up to Euro because Euro GBP is retracing back into the range. After it came back down, went for this order block, for this for value gap. And it basically filled this one. So the order block is not this one, but it's the consecutive three down candles. And we went for the order block high up here. And uh, yeah, we hit it, came back up. OB, okay, it's deleted. Let me actually go like this. Okay, so we have Dixie being bullish, right? So Dixie bullish means that ES is going to have a hard time going higher, right? Pretty much wrong. And I'd say it's wrong because it definitely went higher. And after it hit the level, it's finally selling off. So that to me means that while the correlation Dixie, G, GBP and Euro is immediate, like you see it real time, in here there are delays and whatnot. And it's always tricky, but you have to wait for your market to hit key levels before looking at anything. What do I mean by that? Let's look at the daily. The daily had this buy side liquidity, which was absolutely exposed. And we are in, a, in an area where volume was light because the bodies are tiny. So that means it's going to not have a super hard time going through this. But when it does that, you have to understand, OK, fine. We had intermarket analysis suggesting that the market was actually Dixie was actually going higher. So when the, when yes hits his key liquidity pool or its higher time frame order block breaker fair value gap, then I'm waiting to see if there is actually a breakdown. To be honest with you, even if you don't have Dixie, is okay because you are still waiting for the key levels to be hit, and at the key levels that has to be hit. You are then on alert mode looking for the setup. You don't you don't even have to know what Dixie is exactly doing, just trade what you see. And in this case, we have these equal lows. We went in here. And one thing that I highly suggest is study the intermarket analysis or the comparative analysis between like assets. ES and Dixie, I don't think they are like assets, but the three indices they are. And let's see what happened there. After we went into the higher time frame level, exactly what happened? Sorry, a little bit of a delay there. So exactly what happened when we went above this? So we marked the range, raid area, because we've been raiding this. And in all of this, we look for SMT because we are now above a liquidity pool. And we see that this is going higher while this one is going lower. And very important, the fact that this is not able to go any higher doesn't necessarily mean it's the weakest. It doesn't mean that. It just means that there is smart money accumulation or distribution and in this case it was distribution you can see this by also the available liquidity 
in here the liquidity available and easy to take were these two lows or these two lows while in here the easy liquidity were these two lows so which one is going to move the most also depends on where the liquidity is likely to be attacked in that sense and uh, the the weakness the the weakness on uh, on the ice is also important of course but don't only focus on that one because by that logic we can say uh, this one went higher in here so and this one went lower so it's better to go short dow instead of going short the uh, nasdaq and that would have been wrong because nasdaq moved a lot lower because the liquidity in here it's easier and the drone liquidity on nasdaq was stronger by stronger i mean if we go on into the h4 this is already breaking down it's overall weaker don't just focus on the lower time frame and we have this h4 fair value gap with the new weak opening gap in here we do have the same but we are a thousand miles away from it so focus when on the weakest and since this is hitting this pda sooner it's from year to year of course it's going to be the weakest it's going to be the one that reaches it first most likely um that was a, again a little bit of a rant on this correlation which uh, we are so used to forex if you started trading from like with ICT from 2019 or 2020 on indices it's just different it's just different it takes more time and even in here like you had uh, bonds going lower which we know if bonds are going lower they're gonna drag the other markets lower it's not always the case but usually speaking that's how it works because the XCI higher means the interest rate is going higher at times and when it's not it's probably a judas um so this going lower you're like oh my god i need to find shorts on this yeah you can find shorts in this but please first wait for the key higher time frame level to be hit and i'd say minimum that should you should be looking for even if you're scalping i think it's the h1 absolute minimum because m15 yeah it's uh, m30 a little bit better h1 you are safer you you have more time to plan the trade and you will have higher qualities uh, higher trading quality in my opinion um that's pretty much it sadly i couldn't really capitalize on the opportunity i saw on gbp and even then i said how this is an h1 all the block with a fair value gap which is not highlighted in here after it hits that level and it breaks down that's good if this was an M15 level, this one I probably wouldn't even considered. Even if it went lower, that's just not the way I trade. All right, um, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Tomorrow we have some more news. Nothing too fancy, but then we have FOMC, then we have Euro rates, then we have NFP. It's gonna be um, tricky. The session before and just a few minutes ahead of the of the release. But overall, if you keep your risk tight and you just have stop loss, uh, stop losses large enough, I think you can absolutely trade it. Maybe in this week, instead of thinking, oh, I will not do anything because professionals are not trading this, which we don't have any proof that professionals don't trade this. They actually probably do. Um, just use less risk if you are, if you're not confident enough. And if you have a low performance, like say you you trade four weeks where it, where there is NFP, and you have a poor performance, you just highlight what you have done, and then try to find a way to not that mistake to not make that mistake again. You go with lower risk, and once you are confident that you can now actually trade, no matter what the release is going to be, if it's NFP, if it's FOMC, and whatnot, then automatically you became a better trader trader and you have one extra week where you can look for setups Ju just don't discount the nfp week from wednesday 7 uh, 7 a.m new york time just stay at the charts and study ways to actually win in this of course if the market is 
utterly consolidating and doing absolutely nothing, there is nothing you can do. But it's not always the case. The London session, it can actually move when F FOMC is, is present that day, because from the London session, there's going to be 12 hours delay. So for NFP, it's a little bit different. Don't trade 30 minutes before it. I think it's safer and just wait 15, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye bye. See you tomorrow.